One more story. When I was in Bible school, I remember we had this man come and spoke to our chapel service, and he told this story in chapel that morning. And when he told that story, revival broke out, and we didn't have class for three days after that. He said, when I was a young man, I can't remember if he was in the ministry yet, but he was a violinist, and he was an accomplished violinist, and he was on a train. And this train was just chugging along, and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, I want you to get off up here at the next stop. And he thought, well, Lord, I'm on the way to a concert, and I've got to be there, but okay. So at the next stop, he got off. He had his luggage in one hand, he had his violin in the other hand. And the train pulled off, and he said, okay, Lord, now what? And the Lord says, start walking, and I'll tell you what to do. And he just started walking with his violin and his luggage, and it was a small town in the country in Illinois, and he just started walking. And he said, well, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord said, I'll tell you. And he got up to a little street up there, and the Lord said, turn here, and then turn back as soon as you get on that street, turn this way, and just keep walking. And he said, the rest will take care of itself. Well, when he started walking that way, there was a woman that had a daughter that was tremendously afflicted. She was gnarled up in the bed like a knot. No control of saliva, no control of her bowels. She was a young girl, a teenager, early 20s maybe, but she was gnarled up in the bed, pulled and in constant pain, and the mother had gone as far as she could go, and there was nothing else. And she said, God, you're going to have to help me. I believe in you. I trust you. I tell people what you can do. Please help me. And she said, the Lord spoke to her and said, tomorrow morning, be out in front of your house at 1030 and stand there. And he said, there'll be a man coming towards you with a suitcase and a violin. And he said, when he comes, you tell him to come in your house. So he's walking down the street, and this woman jumps up and down. She's crying, and she's screaming, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, my God, oh, my God. And she went out there. He didn't know anything. She's wrapping her arms around him, and he's thinking, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> and he said she brought him in the house, brought him upstairs, and there's that girl laying there like a big knot in the middle of the bed, all pulled, just totally deformed. He said, I got there and I didn't know what in the world, what, Lord, what have you brought me here for? I don't know what to do. And the Lord spoke to him and said, just start playing Amazing Grace. How sweet this is. <laughs> and he said, students, I pulled my violin out, put it up to my chin, and the first refrain that I hit on those strings, he said, a power came on that girl from the time I hit the strings on that violin. And he said, amazing grace, how sweet. He wasn't singing, he was just playing it. And he said, students, that bed started jerking. The covers was flying up. The covers was flying around. I heard bones popping. I heard bones cracking. I looked at that girl. I was afraid to look. It sounded like she was being killed. And he said she was being bumped, and those bones were jerking and snapping and popping. And he said, by the time I got through playing, and when we've been there 10,000 years, he said that girl was totally healed, <laughs> totally healed by the power of God. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, come on, give God praise. Listen to this. Let me finish. 
That girl had not talked in years. She had been gnarled up and was getting more gnarled up by the day. And when it was over, he said she was full of sweat. Her hair was stuck to her head and her clothes were soaking wet with sweat. And she sat up in the bed and said, Mama, I'm hungry. <laughs> now what happened? Here's this man driving along on a train and the Holy Spirit said, this is not gonna be a Kronos moment. This is gonna have to be a Kairos moment. This has nothing to do with time. This has everything to do with timing. And he told the woman, be standing outside about 10.30 tomorrow. He told her that the day before. And sure enough, what time did he get there? 10.30. And he went upstairs and played that violin, Amazing Grace. And God did a great miracle. Why? Because the Holy Spirit had an intersection of time where the natural was going to meet the supernatural. Yeah. 